All right, so what we're doing today is we're going to change out the light bulb behind the gear shift indicator on the gear con gear shift console for a 2013 Mazda CX-5 with the gated shifter. Now, you'll find a lot of people online that do the interior work, and in most cases, I agree, it works. Where you use a flathead screwdriver, and you'll tape the tip so you don't scratch your plastic. Now, with this, I will say it's very difficult to do that because it's so bulky. I actually, believe it or not, I used my my everyday carry pocket knife here, and what I was able to do, as you'll see, the easiest thing here is going to be to scoot the seats all the way back. Now I've already popped this, but it's such a tight fit through here that I needed the knife. So I just literally got the edge of it right under here, and then I gave it a simple twist. Don't lift, don't try to pry. That's how you're going to pop out and scrape and cut. I just got it in there enough and gave the blade a slight twist. And you can twist either direction you want twist away from that edge, twist this way, and it will pop. Now I've already popped this one. So now what I'm going to do is lift it off. Now the other thing I'll tell you is you do not need to unscrew this gear shift knob. You can leave that in place. As you'll see. So as I pull this up, you've got hooks here. Now again, I've already taken this off, so I'll walk you through everything we did here in a second. We've got hooks at the bottom, and you've got two hooks on each side. And then you've got this here at the top, which is a lever. So it'll actually lift out. When you lift it out, it'll go in just the op it'll come out this way and this way. Okay, you're gonna lift it up and then pull towards you. Now, when you do that, you've got a wiring harness for that console light that's right here. Okay, very easy to unclip. You see this? You'll have a little lever here. Push this down and it'll slide right out. Okay, it's connected on the back side. To this piece. Now, this piece is usually mounted into that. Now, I was silly enough to think that to get to the light bulb that we're going to get to in just a second, which sits right here, that to get to this light bulb, I had to get this piece off. Now, this piece goes in at an angle. There's a foot of it that actually sits underneath right there. There's a tab. I tried to pinch and squeeze to lift this off. The tab broke anyway. You don't need to take this off. A good pair of needle nose pliers will allow you to pinch the sides of that as you can see it has underneath here and pop this out of the way and then use those same needle nose pliers to turn this bulb here. Now to remove this bulb you're going to simply turn it counterclockwise and it'll pop out. Now the bulb is tiny, okay, I mean like baby Benadryl size tiny. It's a pain to get out of there. I highly advise against using the pliers to pull that bulb out. You break it you're going to have those pieces of the bulb down in that base that you won't be able to get out of there. I used my fingers, took a little bit of doing. Um, you can put a good soft uh, rubber band on your fingers. You use it to get a little bit of grip if you need to, or a rubber pad you use to open a jar, or if you've got some rubber gloves, um, that'll help because the bulb's slick. I just really discourage using a tool to get that out of there because you don't want to break that bulb. So now the bulb from the factory, mine was hard to read. I was able to. It says TSD95. Now, I called Mazda. They had a hard time finding it in the parts shop. They finally did. It ranged anywhere from $9 to $13 a bulb. It's a very, very tiny bulb. None of the Mazda dealers in my area had it in stock. It was going to be two or three days to get it. This is my wife's vehicle. Didn't want to leave the console apart for that time. Didn't really want to put it back together and risk breaking tabs, pulling it back out. So I went on a wild goose chase, and I managed to find uh, a bulb that works. Now, how well this will work over the long run... Well, that's yet to be seen, so we shall find out. But it does actually fit. Um, it's just literally maybe a half of a millimeter taller, um, but the base works. And that is a Sylvania Long Life 2721. As you can see there, there's the burned out bulb on the right that I have, and then there's the bulb on the left, um, the second bulb that came in this pack. And this was 4 bucks, and I got this at O'Reilly. Now, Advanced Auto Parts, AutoZone, they didn't carry it. O'Reilly had it, so if you got an O'Reilly near you, they might have it, but... If anybody else has got it, Walmart might carry it or any of your local grocery stores. It's Sylvania 2721 LL. So. so at this point, I've already changed out and put the new bulb in here. Um, I fixed this with some super glue. Pain in my butt. And I'm going to put this piece back in again. This is just the harness, and this clip just holds it in place here. So I'm going to put the phone down for just a second while I do this because I don't know how strong the super glue is right now, and I really don't want to risk breaking what I've glued down. So give me just a second here. All right, so I've got it clipped back in, as you can see. It just sits in there like that. So what I was saying earlier is you can reach in there with the needle nose, squeeze those two tabs, and lift this out of your way. 
So now we're just going to reverse the process here, okay? So the first thing we'll do is we'll reconnect this female to the male here. Now I've already checked it to make sure the light works. You'll want to do the same just to make sure your bulb's working. You don't want to get this thing put back together and then it's not working. After I connect this, I'm going to slide the console piece again in forward and then bring it down and you'll have four clamps. You'll have a clamp here, 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 and one back in the center. So I'm going to do that and get it all put back on together and then I'll come back to y'all. All right, so I've got it pushed back into place. I haven't snapped it in yet. As you can see, it's in back here, okay? Shine a little bit of light there. It's clipped in, it's, it's slid under back here. You get your grooves lined up on the sides here. This thing here has got a little bit of play in it. It'll float how it needs to to get back in here. Now, one thing I did notice that I, I don't show you here on the film, um, once I connected the wiring harness back up, it was a little difficult to get it around the shift knob. If you have that, um, put the parking brake on, as you can see mine is. Uh, put your foot on the brake, start the vehicle, bring the vehicle back into neutral. It'll get the gear shift plenty out of your way, and then it'll go over, and then you can put it back in park and turn it off. Um, just make it so you don't have to remove the gear shift knob. If it does get in your way, you can center it with the neutral. Uh, you can start the car. You can do it that way the whole time if you want. If that makes it easier, it might help to get it off, too. I actually took mine off before I realized I didn't need to. So uh, you could also just put the car in neutral and then start the process. So it's all back in place now. So all I'm going to do now is carefully pop this back down in. There's that right side that popped in, left side, back. So it's all clipped back in now, all the way around. We're secured and stable. Um, you probably saw it when the before I'd, the car was fully shut off, but if I turn this car back on, you'll see I've got lights here again. All my lights are lit up, and we've got our problem solved. So a $4 in stock Advanced Auto Riley's bulb, again the Sylvania Long Life 2721, that's seen right here, replaced the Mazda factory bulb that the Mazda dealerships didn't have that they wanted anywhere between $10 and $13 for. So again, take take time, be careful. You won't scratch your plastic up. Like I said, I kind of cardinal sin. I broke the, the rule and I used my knife, but I tend to be pretty well used to that. I'm more comfortable with a knife than a flathead screwdriver when it comes to the auto interior stuff, uh, especially with something that's as tight of a groove as this is. You can see it, you're more likely to scratch it with a flathead than you will with a knife. That's it. Hope this helps y'all.